Nuclear 9-11, the deep state in the book of Revelation. We're fighting spiritual wickedness in high places. The fight is heating up, and there's no getting out of it. What's unfolding before us now is the great and final battle between good and evil. The devil's intent is to leave you confused, desperate, and begging for a solution. The noise, daily stream of lies and misdirection is exhausting, but people are waking up that we are now in the end times. Be not deceived. You need to know the signs of what's coming from the Bible, from the Apocrypha, and in modern visions. Please don't underestimate the scriptures. God has shown the actual battle plan of the enemy, mapped out with precision. The Four Horsemen, the Rise of the Beast, Wars and Famine, the Destruction of Babylon, followed by the Antichrist who will rise from its ashes. I'll convey some Bible prophecies that you've never heard before, and I'll clarify prophecies that you know, but never made sense before. Some people say that no one can know what will happen, that prophecies can only be understood through the rearview mirror. False. That's not why God gave them to us. Prophecies foretell. It's not a history book. God warns, despise not prophecies, prove all things, and hold fast to that which is good. Even the book of Revelation itself says in chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed are those who read and understand this prophecy. That's what we're here for. The scriptures provide a framework of evidence to prove exactly what's going on, even before it happens. Prophecies are given to us as signs, as a warning to prepare, to help us find peace amid turmoil, knowing that all prophecies must be fulfilled and that God is just. We're not talking about blood moons or the Mayan calendar or ancient Rome or Jewish festivals, or Nostradamus, or numerology. We will rely on the voice of God, and the voice of the deep state, and we'll connect the dots in the real world. But you should ask, is any of this speculation? Yeah, some of it. I'm not afraid of being wrong. I'm afraid of being silent. So here goes. The American deep state is the entrenched, unelected, and unaccountable Washington, D.C. elite that hide its crimes behind national security. When discovered, its crimes are denied and covered up by the media. Later, when admitted, it is excused away as incompetence. The tentacles of the deep state reach worldwide. They punish the innocent, reward the guilty, and fool us into blaming each other. They start the wars and keep them going. They decide who's in government, and they delete whomever they choose. The deep state is described in Isaiah 47. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, None seeth me. In the book of Revelation chapters 17 and 18, the deep state is identified as Mystery Babylon, or as the Whore of Babylon. This is the vile, yet beguiling, power, which corrupts governments and the kings, which oppresses, robs, and kills the people. The Whore of Babylon is described as a city decked with gold and arrayed in purple, the color of royalty, drunken with power and with the blood of the innocent. Jesus said, Whether good or evil, by their works ye shall know them. So what, then, does the Whore of Babylon do in the Bible so that we can recognize her works in the real world? Here, the first mystery is answered. The Whore of Babylon is the power behind the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. In Revelation chapter 6, the prophet John describes the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. Everybody understands this as the mysterious tipping point of the last day's events, when things start to get bad and never again return to normal. Identify this single entry point, and the whole sequence of events becomes clear. 
the vision announces the arrival of four horses of different colors, and their riders each bringing some very bad stuff. It all ceases to be a mystery when you figure out it's the deep state, bloodthirsty, exercising its hatred of humanity, and it's happening today. The first horseman was unleashed in 2020 as open tyranny of the deep state. The crowning example is the coronavirus and the pandemic. Open tyranny, drunken with power, and looting the world. They're at war with the people. Full-spectrum dominance. Through corrupt governments, agencies, and institutions. Through education, employers, Wall Street, election fraud. Through a corrupt legal system. Selective enforcement, entrapment, political persecution, cancel culture, censorship, social oppression backed up by media lies, and finally open borders, which means no borders, which means no nations. Today the second horseman is emerging. Peace is being taken from the earth. People are killing each other, and the deep state is pulling the strings. Wars will spread, and fear will spread, but this is not going to erupt into World War III. Instead, the next step is a big sword which will be given to the deep state. Another big event is coming as the second horseman releases its fury inside America. Next, famine. That's the third horseman. The deep state has been undercutting the food supply, but soon they will go full throttle. Resources will disappear overnight, and the supply chain will be permanently redirected. This will bring hyperinflation or starvation for us while the deep state bathes in abundance and opulence. According to scripture, for you, a loaf of bread will cost a day's wage. But for the elites, the wine and oil will be protected. Do you believe it? You will be wise to prepare. And finally, the fourth horseman. It declares death, then straight to hell for the fourth part. That is, the rulers of darkness on this earth, spiritual wickedness in high places. Judgment is swift and destruction of the deep state and wherever its tentacles reach. Death by plague, beginning in Washington, D.C., in one day, as described in Revelation 18. The devil is driving the deep state off a cliff to its own destruction, along with the whole United States, if it were possible, to pave the way for the Antichrist. By their works ye shall know them. By the fruit of their labor ye shall know them. The devil rules in hell, but on this side of hell the deep state imposes the evil agenda. All who go along with it for a paycheck, feigning ignorance, to enforce evil or defend it or allow it, if he does not repent and come unto Christ, he will share in the destruction of the whore of Babylon, God's judgments are just. You must learn and understand all of God's prophecies. You must not be caught unaware and not be deceived by what must surely come about on the earth. But right now we need to look at our immediate situation. It's December of 2023, and the second horseman has been emerging. It means war, border conflicts that will spread, and the deep state is gleefully sending money and arms anywhere to prop up the killing. It's horrible, but it's not World War III. It's not global nuclear annihilation. No nuclear exchange with Russia or China. Satan needs division, fear, desperation, and to crush the souls of nations from within. Please know this. In Matthew 24, speaking of the fearful end times in which we live, Jesus said, Be not troubled. Why? because fear and faith cannot coexist. But there's trouble everywhere. The wars are real. People are killing each other. There's got to be someone to blame. Who's the bad guy? Is it Putin? Ukraine? Is it Israel? The terrorists? China? Iran? Is it us? Are we the new Hitler? The brain shuts down. The mind control programming takes over. Don't ask questions. We're sleepwalking our way into World War III. No one is causing it, and no one can stop it. Fear is poison. 
but the mental poison goes even deeper. As a conservative, if you hate the Ukraine war, but support the Israel war, that makes you a hypocrite. It dulls your sense of conscience and judgment and sets you up to fall for the next deception. The devil wants you in a state of paralysis, afraid to act, at least until late 2024, when the whole game will change and your window to prepare will diminish. In one day, the latent threat of World War III will appear at your front door. Fear will be in your face, and you'll trade anything for peace. But since it's a deal with the devil, you may give up your freedom, but you will still get war, and lots of it. The Savior clarifies all of this in just two sentences you'll be wise to believe. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. You heard it. Be not troubled. The end is not yet. He's saying, don't worry, it's not nuclear annihilation. Yeah, it's bad. And it gets worse fast. And you better prepare. The King James Version says kingdom versus kingdom, but in the original Greek, the word is ethnos versus ethnos. That means these will be regional wars, border wars, race wars, holy wars, or riots within countries that grow into civil wars. Oh, I've heard the skeptics. That doesn't mean anything. Wars have been going on forever. True. It's not just war by itself. These are the wars that follow the first horsemen. So you can know for sure it has truly started. The clock is ticking. You must prepare. The wars spoken of by Jesus are before us now. This is the second horseman. Jesus goes on to say what's next. Famines, that's the third horseman. Pestilences, that's the fourth horseman. Then earthquakes, that's the sixth seal, which according to the book of Revelation is the next calamity after the fourth horseman. But for now, let's remain focused on the second horseman. It appears to have two stages close together. First, when he arrives, he's not in battle. But wars break out, and peace is taken from the earth. Then something changes, and the horseman takes up this big sword. So this sounds like an escalation. There's some kind of change that happens. It's probably not good. It's equally interesting to note that Christ also describes this in two levels. First, there's wars, and second, there's rumors of wars. Well, that doesn't seem like it's much to go on, but rumor? That's a false accusation, an act of war with false blame attached. Is Jesus Christ himself warning us of false flag attacks in our day, along the lines of 9-11? Folks, it's not hard to connect the dots. There's a big one coming, soon after the second horseman shows up, and he's already here. The false flag thing goes like this. Attack yourself blame someone else, and start killing. That's the deep state. Oh, they love this game. They get to wrap it up in patriotism and push a lot of patriots into the kill zone, which at this point, killing patriots is the deep state number one goal. So they're quite excited about this, and they're going to put on a really big show. It goes like this. We're under attack, and you're a straight Christian patriot conservative. Yeah, we've hated your guts for a long time, but today our country needs you. Now step into this meat grinder. Buckle up, everybody. These operations are planned far in advance, with elaborate cover stories, distractions, etc. So how do you know if an attack is a false flag? Well, here's the six-point checklist. If you know when an attack is coming, if you know where it will be, Who's going to be blamed? What's the government response going to be? If they announce it, let it leak out, and don't try to stop it, then when it all happens, well, you can be pretty sure 
It's a false flag. The deep state is actually quite proud of their work, and sometimes they can't help but let it slip out. So let's hear it from the horse's mouth. See what's coming, and see if it might be a false flag. This is Vice President Dick Cheney, who was the shadow government puppet master after 9-11. He ran all the wars while President Bush took an eight-year vacation. This was done under a policy called Continuity of Government, or COG. It's a parallel government structure, ready to take over if the U.S. is disabled under a catastrophic attack. It seems Dick Cheney was the top dog in COG from 9-11 until Bush left office in 2009. Just a few years later, in a radio interview on June 24, 2014, Dick Cheney calmly let out all the secrets. He said that within 10 years, that's 2024, a nuke attack would occur in Washington, D.C., smuggled in by a terrorist, not the Russians, not China. This would trigger a COG takeover for a second time, just like on 9-11. We can only guess what will happen. My guess is they'll restart a war in the Middle East. Here's the clip. Do you think we get through this decade without a massive attack on the homeland? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think there will be another attack. Um, And the next time, I think it's likely to be far deadlier than the last one. Let me imagine what would happen if somebody could smuggle a a nuclear device, put it in a shipping container, and drive it down the beltway outside Washington, D.C. By the way, if that were to happen, do you see the government reconstituting? Because it would have to be military rule for a period of time, at least. Well, there there was, uh, some years ago, a program called the Continuity of Government Program. It was uh, part of the Cold War uh, strategy that we pursued here, and it basically it involved um, having a, a government in waiting, if you will, ready to go, in the event of a nuclear attack on the United States so that we could always uh, maintain uh, the constitutional-based uh, governmental authority. Uh, I was part of that program for several years, um, and uh, a lot of it, I'm sure, is probably still classified, but it was very, very important, and we operated and actually trained uh, under circumstances of um, how would we go about um, making, uh, providing for a government to survive if, uh, you know, we're having uh, nuclear weapons from the Soviet Union falling all over the country. So let's do the false flag test on this nuclear attack described by Dick Cheney. When will it be? 2024. Where will it be? Washington, D.C. By whom? Terrorists. What's the reaction? Continuity of government. Is it announced or leaked? Yeah, on the radio. Any intention to stop it? Seems unlikely. Sounds like a false flag is coming. So if this is really true, would not God warn his people about these things? Yeah, he would. In 1989, a young man named Troy Brewer received such a vision in a split second while driving his truck. He later became a pastor. In this vision, An angel of death appeared to him and showed him three separate future attacks on Lower Manhattan. Here's the clip. God Almighty reveals secrets prophetically. I saw something that looked like New York City. And I could see below the ground, and I could see above the ground, and I could see at ground level. I saw a bomb go off below the ground, and none of the buildings fell. And I will. Then I saw above the ground a bomb go off and some of the buildings fell. The third different way, I saw a bomb go off at ground level and all the buildings fell. Well, it got my attention. And I'm telling everybody, be proactive and pray against that spirit that wants to blow up New York. Because it has willing willing participants in the government there that have authority. It it literally means you have to stand in your relationship with the Lord and contend. In 1989, he saw the 1993 World Trade Center basement bombing. And then he saw 9-11. And what's coming next is a nuke at ground level. And all the buildings will fall. He said government knew about it in advance, but just let it happen.
If such an attack came, it's clear that COG would take over again. But was it ever deactivated? I think not. In 2009, Dick Cheney was on his way out as Obama took over. After winning his Nobel Peace Prize, the first thing Obama did was escalate the wars in the Middle East. Do you recall the surge when troop levels tripled? He initiated new clandestine operations to topple governments and called it the Arab Spring. In every case, they were taken over by the Muslim Brotherhood. Then ISIS was started. The Benghazi incident proved that we were arming rebels in Syria. You think Dick Cheney handed Obama the keys to the shadow government? I would say yes. When Trump took office in 2017, many feel that Obama retained control of the shadow government and used those resources to run interference against Trump. The shadow government raided and prosecuted Trump advisors such as Michael Flynn, Steve Bannon, Roger Stone, Peter Navarro, George Papadopoulos, and others. They locked up a thousand Jan 6 sightseers, half of which are still incarcerated. They also bugged Trump Tower, drummed up fake scandals, fake impeachments, and finally the election fraud that was used to push Trump out of office, despite Trump having legitimately won the 2020 election. Even during the Biden administration, is Obama still in charge? Running the Washington, D.C. shadow government? Blowing up pipelines in Ukraine? Payoffs to Iran? Abandoning weapons in Afghanistan? And running down the U.S. economy? If so, do you not imagine that Obama would prefer to remain in power even after Biden is out? What if the election goes the wrong way? Could be game over. So a false flag takes care of all these problems. Under the laws for continuity of government and the War Powers Act, if the U.S. is under attack and Biden dies in office, an unfavorable election would get canceled and the party in power remains in power. The Constitution would be suspended indefinitely until the wars are ended or the election process is restored. Unlikely. So, for this whole charade to work, two sets of dominoes must be prepared to drop and intersect flawlessly. First, a set of dominoes for the election. I'll explain all of that in a few minutes. Second, a set of dominoes for the false flag and war with Iran, which I'll explain right now. Casting blame is a big deal with false flag operations. You would imagine that an airtight plan must be formulated in advance. But back in the days of 9-11, they thought no one was paying attention. So things did not need to make sense. It was supposedly done by 19 Saudi hijackers. Did we attack Saudi Arabia? Nope. Instead, we destroyed every other Middle East nation except Saudi Arabia. Osama bin Laden denied having anything to do with it. With 9-11, none of the physical evidence made sense. The crime scene, the videos, the interviews. So it didn't take long for people to catch on that the whole thing was a diabolical farce. But this time, the deep state needs a better plan. They need one clear boogeyman, framed in advance, but not too far in advance. They need the public to jump to one conclusion and remain fixated in a state of fear or anger. And they need all witnesses and evidence to vaporize. Iran, as a target, has been on the deep state radar for a long time. So let's hear it from the horse's mouth. On 9-11, when Dick Cheney took over, immediately orders were given to destroy a list of countries that had nothing to do with the 9-11 cover story. Iran was one of them. In the days after 9-11, former General Wesley Clark was probing at the Pentagon, and this is what he heard. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the joint staff who used used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, 
Yeah. We've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk. He picked up a piece of paper. And he said, I just... He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. I said, is it classified? He said, yes, sir. I said, <laughs> I said well, don't show it to me. He said, finish off? with Iran? Is this still yet to come? Did he mean finish off America or finish off Iran? Well, maybe they gave up or called it quits or just forgot about it. Nope, there's more. A decade later in 2012 under Obama, war with Iran is still a plan openly discussed. For example, Patrick Clausen, a DC insider, was quite deliberate about it. And this is what he had to say. We have to face the distinct possibility that our campaign of greater pressure on Iran will not influence the Supreme Leader. And if that's the situation we face, we should find that out soon. Because in that situation, we are headed towards war. I frankly think that crisis initiation is really tough. And it's very hard for me to see how the United States uh, president can get us to war with Iran. Um, which leads me to conclude that if, in fact, compromise is not coming, that the traditional way of Amer America gets to war is what would be best for U.S. interests. Uh, some people might think that Mr. Roosevelt wanted to get us into World War II, as David mentioned. You may recall we had to wait for Pearl Harbor. Some people might think Mr. Wilson wanted to get us into World War I. You may recall he had to wait for the Lusitania episode. Some people might think that Mr. Johnson wanted to send troops to Vietnam. You may recall we had to wait for the Gulf of Tonkin episode. Uh, we didn't go to war with Spain until the USS, uh, yes. until the Maine exploded. And may I point out that Mr. Lincoln did not feel he could call out the Federal Army until Fort Sumter was attacked, which is why he ordered the commander at Fort Sumter to do exactly that thing which the South Carolinians had said would cause an attack. So if, in fact, the Iranians aren't going to compromise, it would be best if somebody else started the war. <laughs> well, but I would just like to suggest that uh, uh, one can combine other means of pressure with sanctions. Uh, I mentioned that explosion uh, on August 17th. Uh, we could step up the pressure. I mean, look, people, Iranian submarines periodically go down. Someday one of them might not come up. Who would know why? <laughs> we are in the game of using covert means against the Iranians. We, we could get nastier at that. In essence, how do we get to war with Iran? Well, false flags, of course, and here's how we can do it. Today, Obama is still in control, so framing Iran for a false flag attack is still a focused priority to get war started. But will you fall for it? Will anyone be fooled? Even for the deep state, this could be tricky. Here's a list of six what-ifs that must be addressed in advance. What if no one believes it? What if they can't get the war started? What if the UN intervenes? What if a president stops it and peace breaks out? Worst of all, what if Iran surrenders? Or what if we get a quick victory before all the patriots are dead? No, 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 no. This will not do. 
The deep state intends to eliminate all of these possibilities, you'll see. The plans are specifically designed to make sure none of these things can happen, and some of this is indicated in scripture. I'll explain as we go. Today, the propaganda is gradually heating up. Biden paid $6 billion to Iran. Oh, extra cash for terrorism. Iran must have funded the attack in Israel. And terrorists are at the Rio Grande, waiting across with help from the Border Patrol. Suspicion is certainly being planted in your brain, but it does not constitute a threat of war from Iran. So pretty soon, going to have to get some deep state terror going. Actual blood and guts in the streets, inside the U.S., But that still won't do the job unless there's also jihadi uprisings within Iran. The Bible describes how this is going to happen from the book of Daniel in chapter 8. The entire chapter is a tricky parallel prophecy about Iran in the last days, but also mirrors ancient times. This vision about Iran, anciently referred to as the Medo-Persian Empire, shows a ram with two long horns or kings. One is longer or more powerful than the other. Iran has two leaders. That's not very common. The shorter horn is the elected president. He took office very recently, just two years ago. But Iran's supreme leader is more powerful. He's the longer horn. He's been in office for 35 years, and it's a lifetime appointment. So there's only one way out of that job. Now here's the prophetic twist. Daniel chapter 8 says that when this war begins, the supreme leader will have been in office for less time than the elected president, less than two years. If you catch what that means, in order for this prophecy to be fulfilled, the supreme leader is going to have to wind up dead and be replaced before the war begins. Bingo. Now you can see how the dominoes are set to fall. It goes like this. Perhaps in the spring of 2024, the world will experience another unanticipated gut-wrenching event. Bad news about the supreme leader of Iran. After months of being demonized by the deep state media, the Ayatollah Khomeini, an 84-year-old iconic religious leader in the Islamic world, will be brutally assassinated. I'm guessing in public, at a religious event, in the open, broad daylight, on video, from multiple angles. The victorious CIA assassins will publicly be given special honors and do worldwide broadcast interviews with play-by-play video accounts of the whole operation, especially the kill shot. Biden will immediately jump in front of the news cameras with, I did that. The media will gush with praise. Biden is a military genius, snapping the head of the snake with surgical precision. We came, we saw, he died. Then comes the blowback. Riots, uprisings, and fear of war, criticism of Biden, and they'll enthusiastically change their story to, Trump did it too, he killed Soleimani. As they play video of Soleimani's execution, this is not intended to heal wounds, but to rub Iran's face deeper into the dirt for a specific purpose. Mass riots and violence will break out worldwide. In the U.S., the Antifa BLM terror network will put on new costumes for another round of election year violence. The deep state will supply proper jihadi attire, makeup, paychecks, buses, bricks, explosives, kerosene matches, food trucks, and drones. The liberal media will praise the peaceful protesters as they destroy churches, loot, kill, and burn U.S. cities for the news cameras. Fox News and Ben Shapiro will say exactly what they want you to think. This new wave of terrorism is clear evidence of the Iranian terror network. Suicide bombers inside the U.S., probably with nukes in their backpacks, waiting for orders. Well, that's quite a leap. But if it's true, you can bet the FBI will find them. Unfortunately, the FBI is busy helping out the rioters. Then it's off to the next city, so there's no time for investigations and no one will be arrested. 
Coming up next, a new supreme leader will appear. He too must be demonized. What if he's a peace lover? We need a holy war. So, not knowing a thing about him, the CIA and media will paint him as a bloodthirsty extremist. The deep state does this all the time. In the news today, Iran installed a supreme leader, a known advocate of terror. Jihadis across the Middle East are uniting. Some say it's the return of the 12th Imam, the Mahdi, the Islamic Antichrist who will arise to slaughter Christians and Jews. So when this breaks, everybody will instantly have some homework to do, straight to Google, to figure out what is this 12th Imam thing, or Mahdi, or whatever it is. We're talking about Islam's primary Messiah figure for the end times. And the deeper you dig, the more this character sounds like the Antichrist. First and foremost, he will be victorious in battle, killing the infidel, the great Satan, America. He will lead the worldwide Islamic revolution, wipe out Israel, kill Jews, establish the caliphate, which is the one world government with Islam as the one world religion. It works on the radical jihadi convert or die principle. You must deny Christ or your head will be disconnected. Sounds more like the Antichrist every minute. So if the controlled media merely accuses the supreme leader of thinking he's the 12th Imam, is that enough to trigger any of these conditions? Will Iran be suddenly victorious in battle, like some kind of miracle? Yep. That, at least, could be arranged. Someone pulling the strings inside the U.S. will arrange mass death of U.S. troops at the onset of battle in Iran. And I can hear the lashback. Who could possibly know if that will happen? Maybe God? As we know, he ain't talking. And besides, nobody knows. My reply? Yep, you've been listening to the devil too much. So, Satan's goal here is to break all nations against each other, except in the Middle East, where he wants to unify Islam for war against America. And the deep state wants to help out. That's Obama's legacy of war-making strategies. First, arm the enemy. Why do you think the U.S. has left vast armaments behind in the Islamic nations? In Daniel 8, verse 3, the prophecy describes that just before the war begins, Iran will gain influence over the nations surrounding it on all sides. Check your map. That includes countries like Afghanistan, Iraq, Turkey, and Pakistan. All are Muslim, and all are militarily significant, in possession of vast arms from the U.S. This prophecy makes it clear that the U.S. will not be at war with Iran alone but against a coalition of Islamic nations. This is how the dominoes are set for the false flag and then war in Iran. Now we're going to change gears to what's going on in the U.S., but we're not going to look through the lens of the news or political debate. Yuck. We'll look at prophecy, something you probably have never heard before. With it, God allows us to foresee some crazy stuff coming within the U.S. political power structure. That probably sounds impossible. So now I must share with you the motherlode of all biblical last days prophecies. It proves the timing of upcoming events. It connects the dots with other end times prophecies. It's about the American deep state and how the U.S. plays a central role in the last day's prophecies. Written 2,500 years ago, this vision starts by precisely mapping out U.S. presidential succession in the final 100 years up to the appearance of the Antichrist. It pinpoints the autumn of 2024 as a massive point of transition. So it's time to dust off your scriptures. We'll be working from the King James Version of the Apocrypha. The name Apocrypha suggests secret or hidden. Justifiably so, as this 300-page section of the Old Testament was ripped out of the Bible 150 years ago by the devil to keep you from finding it. We will concentrate on just two chapters. It's a vision of the last days called Ezra's Eagle. 
In the book of 2 Esdras, chapters 11 and 12, the ancient prophet Ezra is informed by God to prepare himself, because in the morning he will be shown the last days. The vision is of an eagle. God explains that this eagle represents the beast with ten horns, or the fourth Babylon, or the legs and feet of iron shown to Daniel in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. God explains that Ezra's vision adds other information not seen by Daniel. You should understand that John the Revelator also saw the same beast. His vision supplies additional details, such as the whore of Babylon, the purpose of the ten horns, the mystery of the seven heads or seven nations, the destruction of Babylon, the mark of the beast, etc. With Ezra's eagle, all of these finally make sense. Thus, Ezra's eagle and Daniel's visions and the book of Revelation are three parts of the same story, which when put back together will unveil in precise detail exactly what's coming. This is truly mind-blowing. This image on the screen now shows the main elements of Ezra's vision. It's an eagle standing upright with three heads, wings outstretched. There's a row of individual feathers protruding from the edge of its wings. These represent U.S. presidents in chronological order, starting on the right side and continuing on the left side. Oddly, the heads are silent. The eagle body does the talking and controls the succession of presidents. The eagle body represents the deep state. The three heads are asleep and represent former U.S. statesmen, powerful individuals. When these guys wake up, all hell breaks loose. Especially that guy in the middle, though he looks innocent enough. Meanwhile, if we overlay the history of presidential succession with this prophecy, we can figure out the timeline, as shown in this image. The vision explains that the length of the feathers indicates vital information. Starting on the right side, the second eagle feather is identified as being twice as long as any of the others. This is FDR. The prophecy explains that after he rules, no other president will serve in office for more than half as long. God is talking about the presidential two-term limit, which was introduced in the 22nd Amendment, after FDR. And somehow, this is provided as a clue from the dust, about something that is going on today? I also need to explain about short feathers, highlighted in red. A short feather, as understood from the prophecy, is when a president is taken out prematurely by the deep state, before having fulfilled the terms to which he was elected or installed. On the right side, there's JFK and Nixon. Here we go. Prophecy settles the burning question that the deep state did execute JFK and that the deep state ran Watergate to push Nixon out of office. Well, the whole JFK thing is obvious, but Nixon, wasn't he a monster? Well, if so, how is it true that Nixon's re-election was nearly the biggest landslide victory in U.S. history? He won 49 states. That's 97% of the Electoral College. Nixon was vastly popular in part because he ended the Vietnam War. But to the deep state, that's a big no-no. So they invented Watergate. Next up, Trump and Biden. Both are also shown as short feathers. How is Trump a short feather? Was Trump fraudulently forced out by the deep state? God is setting the record straight again. The deep state hates Trump, so they tried every trick to remove him and all failed until they finally defrauded the 2020 election. If the prophecy is true, then Trump was actually elected to two terms, as prophesied by Kim Clement, but was pushed out by the deep state, serving zero days of his second term. Similar to Nixon, Trump vacated office voluntarily under pressure. Ordinarily, under such circumstances, the VP would eagerly take office, but it's clear Pence was also in on the fraud. The majority of voters are sickened by all this, but it was fulfillment of prophecy. 
It's irrefutable evidence that the prophecy is true, so that we know in advance what is coming based on this prophecy. Now we get to unravel prophetically what will happen with Joe Biden. Biden was not elected. He was installed by the deep state. In a different way, Gerald R. Ford, who took over after Nixon, was also never elected. He was installed by the deep state. But when it comes to Biden, the prophecy specifically states that his time in office will be shorter than Trump. That's less than four years. Time's running out. Prophetically, Biden will be terminated sometime before the final day of his single-term presidency. That's before January 20th, 2025. When trying to figure out how the dominoes might fall, remember that as a short feather, Biden is terminated by the deep state. Death from natural causes or accident doesn't apply. Or if he's legitimately impeached or removed under the 25th Amendment, or if he were to lose an election. So don't concern yourself with any of those in Biden's case. Guaranteed, this will be a deep state operation with a really great cover story like a lone gunman or an accident or to make his death look like an enemy attack. That's a hint. And we have more information to go on, but first I must explain about detached feathers. In this drawing, you can see that the feathers on the right side are holding together pretty well, but on the left side, presidential succession completely falls apart. There's a bunch of feathers that are detached, and there's a big gap that must be explained. There are two detached feathers shown after Biden, and they're a huge clue. They're described as contending to take office after Biden. That's an election, already pared down to one candidate from each party. But as this prophecy describes, neither of these two feathers will become president. Immediately after Biden is eliminated, these two feathers also get devoured. The candidates are toast, and the election is canceled. Then if you look farther off to the side, there are two more detached feathers. They are the Antichrist and the False Prophet, who will take over later by stealth, after some very bad stuff happens. We'll get to them later. But for now, it's plain from this prophecy that elections are a thing of the past. Transfer of power from this point forward will be accomplished by coup, or by murder, or by stealth. This is informing you that the Republic, our representative form of government, is already gone, and it ain't coming back. So let's drill down into exactly what will happen in the 2024 election. According to the prophecy, Biden dies while in office. Then the candidates are both eliminated together. So, prophetically speaking, it's certain that Biden will not receive the nomination of his party, even if he wins the primaries. It means that Biden will be eliminated during the election season, after the party conventions. On the calendar, that's between late August to early November 2024. As I see it, the Democrats don't care who wins as long as puppets are in all the key positions and the deep state power structure remains in control. There'll be no debates and probably not much campaigning. Election rigging will push big numbers for Biden, despite near zero turnout at the polls. Seeing this, the other Democrat candidates will concede and fall off the radar. But because of some kind of scandal or health or sanity, or a threat of impeachment or whatever, at the convention in late August, Biden will be dropped by the DNC. A heroic dark horse candidate will be summoned and installed by the DNC. The liberal media will be thrilled to have anyone but Biden, so they'll jump behind the new candidate and begin the familiar hero worship campaign script. So what's up for Trump? Trump will ignore all of the other candidates. Trump's campaign is to play for the crowds and campaign against the deep state to constantly reinforce that he will expose and dismantle their systems of corruption. Trump will not be assassinated. He will seem bulletproof. Lawsuits and criminal prosecutions against Trump will proceed, but fail to stop him. The more the deep state hates him, and the more the media hates him, the more America loves him. 
Voters can feel a Republican landslide coming. This is indisputable to anyone with a pulse, but scores of the deceased voters will staunchly side with Biden. The polls will confirm. Fortunately, the energy is undeniable, and the crowds do not lie. But the media will lie hesitantly saying Trump's name with a well-rehearsed, vomitous gag. Ah, the smell of victory. But it's all an act. Seen as insanely popular and indestructible, at precisely the last minute, Trump will suddenly be disqualified on what looks like a technicality, guilty of no crime. The media, already aware of this, has been instructed to play along that this time the election is for real. It's their role in the PSYOP. Please remember that the Ezra's Eagle prophecy is in part about the 22nd Amendment. This is the prophetic indication of how Trump will be disqualified. In the deep state court system, all 2020 election fraud cases are immediately thrown out. They're dismissed before they start, or or if you have a bunch of money, they'll run in circles until you're bankrupt, and then they'll be thrown out. This is controlled by the deep state. But somewhere in the bowels of the judicial system, an election fraud case will quietly be filed by an unknown deep state plaintiff in front of a deep state judge. Mysteriously, this one will be allowed to proceed completely off the public radar. At just the right moment, days before the Republican convention in mid-July of 2024, as Trump is guaranteed the nomination, fantastic news! A victorious court verdict will emerge. Election fraud is proven. Trump was elected in 2020. And after reviewing all of the evidence, the judge will further determine that Trump voluntarily abandoned his second term in office. Thus, according to the 22nd Amendment, having already been elected twice, Trump cannot be elected a third time. The media will roar. The scandal will rock the globe. Trump is out, disqualified on term limits. But the final dagger will be handed to the RNC. The RNC will sell Trump out in a New York minute. But first, they will hold a mock hearing for the world to see, live broadcast as if it's the trial of the century. The scene is three RNC executioners seated at a table in a dark room wearing black hoods. There'll be no swearing in, no opening statements, no interrogations. Only one person will speak, seated alone under the lights. Without being asked, Mike Pence will spontaneously recount, as an eyewitness in the Oval Office from the time in question, that Trump voluntarily abandoned the office of president. The gavel will go down, and Trump will be thrown out. Will the RNC now do what they always do? Install a confirmed scumbag loser? A Trump hater hated by Trump lovers? An establishment gopher? It will be a deja vu nightmare. Honestly, they would reanimate John McCain if they could. But Pence paid his dues. On Gen 6, Pence took the 30 pieces of silver. Then a second time drove the stake into Trump's heart. He earned it. So let's play out the nomination scenario for Pence. After the show trial, the RNC will pretend to go deep underground for days of backdoor dealing. Finally, a grateful RNC will emerge with an unexpected surprise announcement. The nomination will be awarded to Mike Pence. Why? Well, in the name of justice, of course. Considering Trump stole the vice presidency from Pence when Trump betrayed America by vacating the Oval Office without a fight. 
Pence will accept the Republican nomination to recorded applause from a secluded location. The media will crown Pence as the new lifeblood, the savior of the heart and soul of the GOP. But is Pence a racist, homophobe bigot? Not anymore. A worthy opponent. Could he possibly beat Biden? Let the speculation begin. Fox News and Ben Shapiro will instantly jump on the bandwagon as the official voice of the right. They point out that anyone can beat Joe Biden, so Pence will do just fine. Of course, voters with a pulse feel differently. They are ripped beyond expression, disgusted, and close themselves off to the whole process. They would rather vomit than vote. Sensing this, the deep state must act fast. They push the button on pre-cooked violent protests, already pre-staged across the country, staffed by FBI agents, all wearing MAGA hats and COVID masks, throwing Molotov cocktails. The media will disapprove. Bystanders will be jailed. Democrats will be released. Against this backdrop, just four weeks later, in August, at Chicago, the DNC will, in a similar manner, put away Joe Biden and wheel out Michelle Obama. You are in a slow-motion train wreck. But you think it's an accident? This is the election psyop. Every part planned long in advance. The deep state message is being whiplashed into your brain. Your passion is misguided to save something that no longer exists. Government of the people, by the people, and for the people has long been extinguished from the earth. If you disagree, you're an insurrectionist. This is how the election dominoes are staged. Waiting to intersect with the false flag. And that's what's coming next. But first, we must return to Ezra's eagle to understand who in the heck are these three eagle heads and what are they going to do. Symbolically, the sleeping eagle heads represent former statesmen. After leaving office, they no longer appear to have any voice in government. But when things heat up in this vision, the sleeping eagle heads wake up, take action, and cease to be dormant. According to scripture, the eagle heads are not equal. The first eagle head in the center is more powerful than the other two. They are described as the active heads of three polarized kingdoms within the nation. These kingdoms have been recently revitalized or invigorated, which means that people have been separating and polarizing into these three political factions. In territorial terms, you might say red states, blue states, and Washington, D.C., which is not a state at all. Another way to understand this is, one, the establishment, two, patriots and conservatives, and three, leftists and feminists in that order. So let's take a stab at this. Who are these persons? Powerful former office holders figureheads to each of these three factions, political icons, able to influence large segments of society. Hmm. I will pose that the three eagle heads are Obama, Trump, and Hillary. And since these guys play a central role in the prophecies going forward, when I'm talking about the deeds of each of these eagle heads, I will instead use their names. The eagle heads also pop up in the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 11 forward, which describes the upcoming war very clearly. I'll point out where Obama, Trump, and Hillary fit in these prophecies as we go along. But, you say, they hate each other's guts. Why would they collaborate? Well, this is how it works. Each of them has made a deal with the New World Order or the Globalists or the Antichrist. They have not made a deal with each other. They each have separate roles to play. 
according to what they feel is in their own agenda. The Antichrist is behind the scenes in control. He needs to deceive you and the entire nation, left, right, and the deep state, to drag the nation to its near destruction. Imagining that these three figures are unified is part of the deception. That you should go along, wherever it leads, so the dominoes can start falling. Then, in late 2024, five prophetic events unfold in rapid succession. These events are described in Ezra's Eagle. Cast your mind into the mood of the nation at this time. It's August 2024. War with Iran is looming. Unemployment and inflation are worse every day. Election year violence has been the worst ever, but no one knows what they're fighting about. Trump is out. The election is toast. Patriots are stunned, withdrawn. But despite what you think or feel, when early September comes, there's one thing we can all agree on. It's that we should forget ourselves and stop for a minute to acknowledge September 11th, to put aside our differences and to pay respect to the victims of the attack and the families and the survivors and the first responders and the soldiers fallen in battle. Ordinary people gather at ground zero. Workers gather. The UN is in session, but breaks to allow 10,000 global delegates to gather. Certain politicians gather. The names are read. As the eyes of the nation are fixed, the city goes quiet. Then the nuke hits. In a blinding moment, all of lower Manhattan is turned to dust. On-site live video feeds go dark. Commentators in studios nervously interject, apologizing for technical difficulties. Until minutes later, they cut to a remote video feed showing the mushroom cloud. Dear God, what have we done? The silence echoes in your ears. Time stops. The frantic chatter of what's going on bounces off your brain. Until an hour later you hear Washington, D.C. has also been hit. A few more hours pass. More Massive explosions are reported, still trying to make sense of it. They're at remote locations across the U.S., in open fields, in small towns, even at some military bases. What you have witnessed is the big sword of the second horseman. Biden will die at this time, either at Ground Zero in New York or if he refuses to go down with the ship, the deep state will put on their jihadi outfits to assassinate Biden. They'll get the kill shot on video, mimicking the assassination of the supreme leader. This will be posted on Facebook under one of the deep state jihadi accounts. This will be pushed in your face as irrefutable evidence it was Iran. It will spread throughout the Muslim world to prove that Allah is with the twelfth Imam, to crush the infidels and the great Satan. The nation will be left in a state of shock, glued to the news as jihadi victory celebrations across the globe get prime coverage. In contrast, details will remain sparse about the destruction across America. Why are we left in the dark? Were all of the targets military? Has the media been instructed to be silent about locations, deaths, and the extent of damage? What about Washington, D.C.? It seems no one wants to say. The government is paralyzed, and no one can speak with authority. Then, 
it's announced that China has invaded Taiwan. Taiwan has yielded without resistance. And Russia has taken Kiev also with zero resistance. Has World War III finally started? At this moment, continuity of government takes full effect. According to Ezra Ziegel, Obama arises, takes control, and unites with Trump and Hillary. Obama then devours the two candidates as written in the prophecy. The eagle heads do not do this, just Obama. Please interpret this as you will. To me, it looks like the candidates will not be getting in the way. The election will be terminated. I feel that the word devour in this case means that the candidates are under Obama's control. Both will publicly and simultaneously concede the election. They will agree it cannot continue. Then they will glowingly endorse Obama as the new dictator. At the party conventions just a month or two before, I believe that both candidates will have been handpicked and installed for this purpose. Then Obama addresses the nation, flanked by Trump and Hillary. Asserts leadership, declares unity, calms the nation, and points the path forward. He delivers the following address. We won't pretend that we always get along. But our nation is facing a bigger battle now. It's time to put aside our politics. We're facing an outside threat to our existence. We need the strength of this nation. We need the shrewd cunning of the D.C. elite, the patriots of the right, and we need the wisdom of the left. Recorded applause will play in an empty studio, obviously out of place. Obama pauses, falling back from the mic a bit as if finished, then shifts forward to contritely interject, free the Jan Sixers with redress. We need them now. If you fall for this, you've been Stockholmed. This is not a peace offering. He was not elected president. He has no authority to pardon. He gives you candy, so you make him dictator. Which you will soon regret. And that which you think is flattery is the devil declaring how he will lead you to destruction. One, the left's utopian wisdom will enslave them in their own 15-minute detention camps. Two, the patriotic delusion of the right will seduce them into the meat grinder. And three, the duplicitous deep state will soon be publicly blamed, drawn, and quartered. One nation under God, that's over. America is gone. You're working for the new world order.